Hello, welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. My name is Kelsey, and I'll be going over the probability density function and expectation values. Uh, so this is part one of a two-part series, uh, two-part video. Um, we have a series on probability, and I strongly recommend you check out the videos before the playlist uh, in the playlist if you haven't already. Um, they make a really good review, and they kind of lead up into probability density function and expectation values. Okay, so a good start would be uh, a definition of sorts. So Probability density function, uh, PDF uh, for short, describes the likelihood of a random variable to take on some value. And I'll write that down. Uh, and generally, we like to talk about two kinds of random variables. We like to talk about discrete random variables. So if you roll a dice, there are six possibilities, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and you have your probability density function would tell you that each, on a fair dice at least, on each number, you would have a 1 6 probability of getting each one. So a continuous var random variable is not like a dice. You don't roll 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, it could explain how much rain you're expecting 2 inches, 2 and a half inches, inches, 3 inches, or heights, etc. And from a probability density function, you could be able to tell how likely it is that 2 to 4 inches of rain fall using that example. Okay, there are two very important um, properties of the probability distribution function, and one is that it is normalized. So for the discrete case, if you add up all the probabilities, it needs to have a total of one. So the dice, each, uh, each value has a one-six chance. If you add up all those one-six for six times, because there are six different values that the um, random value, that a variable can take, uh, one six six times is one. For the continuous case, it looks like this, and it means the same thing. So all possibilities must be accounted for. All probabilities must be taken into account. Um, if you add up all of those probabilities, it needs to equal one. It can't be greater than one. Can't be less than one. Okay. Another important. property is that probability density cannot be greater than 1 or less than 0 in any place in the function. Uh, you cannot have a probability greater than 1. You cannot have a probability that is less than 0. That um, does not have any meaning. OK, so I will go over some more in, uh, important properties. or things you can use the probability distribution or density function for. Uh, OK, so for the continuous case, one very important thing you'll need it for uh, So if you want to find the probability of finding the random continuous, uh, continuous variable in some range, so for our earlier example, I mentioned rain. If you want to find the probability that uh, it rains between 1 and 3 inches of rain, you would say probability to, of finding y, how much it's raining, between 1 and 3. You would plug it into this integral, use your PDF, which should be given to you, and that will give you the probability of finding it, um, that value of y between 1 and 3. So that's a very important uh, thing you can do with the PDF. And so another reason why the probability um, density function is so important is because you can find an expectation value. So an expectation value is basically what your intuition thinks it is. So if you take an infinite number of trials with this uh, random variable, the expectation value is going to be basically the arithmetic mean of all those trials. So, okay. This is really important because if you're, say, gambling or trying to predict something, your expectation value is basically going, what you're going to say you think uh, is going to show up from said random variable. So the way you calculate that uh, for the discrete case, um, 
the way we notate it is usually e of x for expectation value. Um, expectation value. You would multiply x for every probability available at the function. And you would sum that up, and then you would get an expectation value for your discrete case. And for the continual case, it's very similar, but with the integral. Um, so both of these can be used to find some kind of expectation value for some given random variable. And that is a very powerful tool. It's very useful and very applicable in the real world. So another thing you can do is you can find the expectation value of x. You can also find the expectation value of x squared as well as y squared. So it's the same thing. You just would square these as well. OK, so that's it for this part. For the next part, I will be going over examples of how to use the probability density function to find expectation values. So thank you very much for watching. And if you would like to see more on our probability playlist, you can click up here. If you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can click over here. If you want to visit us on centerofmath.org, you can click the link down here. And if you're on a mobile device, there should be an I in the top corner over there. If you click it, it should give you the same links. Thank you very much for watching, and we hope you learned something.